instead of these numbers, how can we assign actual cell identities to these? I could do find all markers and then work my way through each individually, but how can we do this in just a super simple, unbiased, and automated way? All right, we're going to be using single R, so go ahead and install that through the Bioconductor Manager. And I'm going to be using Surat for my pre-processing and clustering, but this part is optional. You can use something else, or you can just use single cell experiment, which is loaded by default when you load single R. All you really need is log normalized counts, but I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste a very basic Surat pre-processing. I'll just really quickly go over it because that's not the point of the video. Basically, I'm just reading my 10x data, filtering based on mitochondrial reads, getting rid of outliers, normalizing, and then scaling and doing all the PCA neighbors and clustering. So let me just go ahead and run that. All right, so if we plot this U map, we see that we have 17 different clusters. So this is the problem we're getting at. Of course, I could do find all markers and then work my way through each individually. I can plot feature plots and see which clusters are expressing what gene. But how can we do this in just a super simple, unbiased and automated way? And that's where single R comes in. So let's just go ahead and load single R. I'm going to show you two different ways. First way is using single R's built-in references, so you don't need any additional packages. So we're just going to make a new variable called ref, and this is mouse data. So we're going to use the mouse RNA-seq data from single R slash celldex. So this is an important point. Here are the different data sets you can do that are built into single R. So we're going to be using mouse RNA-seq data, which kind of is a little limited. If you're doing human data, this is actually a lot easier. Usually this human primary cell atlas data set is really good. It has a lot of different cell types, but as you'll see, this mouse RNA-seq data set, it'll do a decent job, but the second method I show you in just a couple minutes will be even better. So we're going to load this reference. But now we're going to make a new object called results which is just going to be a data frame of the mapped cell labels. So we're going to call the single R function. And then we're going to pass our Surat object, which was just called data, but we need to pass it as a single cell experiment. And then we're just going to set ref to ref, which is just this object here. And then labels, we're going to set that equal to, let me just show you real quick. If we look at ref, Let's look at the call data. And you see there's a label main and then there's a label fine. For this mouse data set, I don't know how fine these labels actually are. So we're just going to use label main here. You see that it has different cell types. So we're just going to do ref and then it's just going to be label main. And then that's pretty much it for this part. And then let's just run this. It'll probably take, I don't know, two, three, four minutes. All right, now if we look at results, we see that we just have this data frame. And all we really want is this labels column. You see that it has the cell label. Barcodes are going to be in the same order as the single cell experiment you passed it. So you can just take this column, the labels column, and append it to your metadata. So I'm just going to make a new column in my Surat metadata called single our labels and that's just going to be results label so now if we look at our metadata if we go over we see that we now have single r labels let's actually plot that i'm just going to do a serrat dem plot and then group by single r labels All right, so we see some pretty good consistency here. You see most of these clusters are one color. There's always gonna be a few outliers, like I doubt there's any adipocytes in here, and there's definitely no hepatocytes in here, but there's gonna be a few of the cells labeled just because inherent single cell noise. Let's just do a couple quick checks. So I'm going to do a feature plot just for CD45, which is an immune marker, and then CD3, which is a T cell marker.
All right, so CD3, T cells, that's the cluster that was labeled T cells up here. And then CD45, this is just the gene. And you see all these NK cells, monocytes, T cells, granulocytes, they all were positive for CD45. So we can tell this labeling worked really well. But if you remember, we had more clusters than are shown here. And some of these minor clusters aren't labeled because those cell types were not in this reference data set that we used. So the better way to do this, instead of just using this built-in cell reference, is to actually use a single cell reference. And there's a bunch of available single cell references that you can use. Of course, you can just download something offline, or there's built-in bioconductor packages that have nice references already available. I'm going to import a mouse single cell reference and use that instead. So one available resource is this scRNA-seq package. And if you go to their website, you'll see that there's a bunch of different data sets you can choose from in human and in mouse. Instead, I'm going to use the tabular Morris data set, which is this huge data set of a bunch of different tissues from mice. So for this, we need to import experiment hub, and then we can set a new variable, just eh for experiment hub, and we'll just call experiment hub. And then we can query experiment hub for tabular Morris. And I just really care about the droplet. I don't really care about smart seek too. So we can call that like this from our experiment hub object. And then we can just take this number here. And you see we have this big single cell experiment with over 70,000 cells. Like I said, this was from, from a bunch of different tissues. So we can subset this based on lung data instead of all 70,000 cells, which we don't need. So let's just make a lung ref and we'll just set it equal to this. And then we'll subset it on lung. And the column name, I'm not showing it just to save time, but there's a column called tissue. And we want everything that is long. And then there's also a column for cell type. And we don't want any cell type labels that are NA. You see here are all the different labels. And we're just going to pick cell ontology class. It's just the cell type. All right, so now we have a single cell experiment with 5,404 cells. All we need to do is log normalize it, and then we can use it as a reference like we did earlier. So we're just gonna use a package called Scuttle, super simple to use and do log normalizations of single cell experiment objects. So you'd install it like this, and then let's go ahead and load Scuttle, and then we can log normalize long ref. And then we're going to run single R. It's going to be similar, so I'm just going to copy and paste it from above. So this will stay the same, but now our reference is long ref, and our labels are going to be that cell ontology ID. So we need to call long ref and then cell ontology I or class, actually. Cell ontology class. And this will probably take a little while longer than running it on the built-in bulk RNA-seq reference. All right, it took a couple of minutes, but we can just copy and paste what we did earlier. And now you see we get a lot more lung-specific labeling. So let's pop this out. T-cells looks pretty similar. Monocytes, leukocytes, or granulocytes from earlier. Stromal cells, fibroblasts from earlier. Endothelial cells the same, but we get things like alveolar macrophages, which weren't included in the other ones, and then some labeling like non-classical monocytes, mast cells, myeloid cells. Even these really small clusters like pneumocytes are labeled. So I know it was a little bit more involved. It really only takes a couple extra steps, but this gives you the ability to use any reference you can find, any single cell data, and use it as a reference to label your data. So if you're feeling lazy, do that first method I showed you. But if you want better results, do it like this. And again, you can use tabular marcinus or that single cell experiment database I showed you or any data set you can download. You might be able to get away a little more by doing the lazy method on human data, but it's really worth knowing this method too.